Still thinking about where to send your child to school this fall? Come take a look at St. Mark Lutheran School and see what a Christ-centered education can offer in a culture that is always changing. Give your child a solid education and a firm foundation. At St. Mark, we inspire academic excellence and equip future Christian leaders at an affordable tuition rate. Limited spots are available in grades kindergarten through 8th grade. For more information or to schedule a tour, call 218-444-3939 or email principal at stmarksbemidji.org. The following program is brought to you by the Church Playground Safety Commission, who reminds you that trying to convert the swings into a trebuchet is probably a really bad idea. In the morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, how are you today? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You're listening to St. Mark and Bemidji's podcast, a podcast about redemption through the glory of Christ Jesus, our risen Savior. Thank you for listening today. Whether or not the pastor teaching the meditation, or if I say the right exact words in this episode, the Holy Spirit is reaching out to you through God's Word, which is faithfully taught in each and every episode. So if you place value in that faith that the Spirit kindles in you, Pass it along to everyone that you can, because the rewards of faith in Jesus Christ are life everlasting in Him. Why wouldn't you want to see a fellow life traveler in distress saved just as you are? Tell them in person. Invite them to church. Share this podcast with them. Give them a call on the phone. Send them a text. Don't leave them out there on their own. Be that willing tool of the Holy Spirit. The faith that you possess is meant to be used, not kept on a shelf. And before we get any farther, I just want to thank you for listening today. If you've got any feedback, questions, or whatever, there's a new, where, how about newish, tool in the show notes that lets you message the podcast directly. And I promise if you send me a message, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Our meditation for today is based on a well-known parable, even by unbelievers, the one of the prodigal son. This parable is interesting from a couple of different points. One, it's an extended parable. There's the main story, and then there's a second shorter story about the quote-unquote good son. The other part is that many lifelong Christians have occupied both roles, both the prodigal son and the good son at different points of their lives. Listen carefully and think about your own experiences here. And then, listen to what the Father says in the story. Pastor Cowie will provide us with our sermon today. And, if you're ever down in rural southwest Minnesota on a Sunday morning, I can't encourage you enough to stop by St. John's in Wood Lake. It's a unique, rich experience in the study of the Word. And so now, without further ado... Onward with our study. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I'm pretty sure the young prodigal son was not about to take any advice from his old man. He was young and stupid, and he was convinced He convinced his father to advance him his inheritance. He just couldn't wait for his father to die so that he might set off and be independent and free and live as he wanted. He would take no advice, no life advice from his dad. But I'm pretty sure there came a point in his life when he would have gladly received such advice. Jesus says it. He says when he came to his senses. At the point when he had lost everything, he realized what he had and what he had lost and how he had lost it and how it had hurt him. I think it's a fair question for us to ask ourselves. Are you ready to take life advice? 
from a father who loves you? I have become convinced that the first letter of St. Peter, which we heard in our epistle for today, is the letter for our time. Having studied it now in Bible class, and now this is the fourth Sunday since Easter that it's shown up as one of our epistles. I'm convinced that this is the advice that we prodigals, living as strangers in a foreign land, in a world increasingly hostile to us as Christians, dangerous. This is what we need to hear from a father who loves us if we're ready to listen. So this week I've been sort of imagining, imagining the, the, our epistle lesson for today from, from Peter's letter, like, like a letter from a father to his son, crumpled up in the pocket of the prodigal. He stuck it there before he left. His father said, take this. He never read it until he did. And the advice goes something like this. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. The opposite of humility is pride, and it's pride that brought the prodigal to where he was. It's pride that caused him to, to lift himself up above others, above the needs or the cares of others seeking his own wants and desires, give me my share. But pride is not an anomaly. It's not something reserved just for stupid young men. Pride comes naturally to all sinful men and women. June is not the only month, not by far, that pride is celebrated. The elevation of our own desires, even sinful desires, above the good of others. That's something that our world consistently teaches. And our sinful flesh usually goes right along with it. In the verse right before our epistle, St. Peter quotes a, a proverb that says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Sometimes that humbling comes to us unwillingly. Sometimes it comes as the natural result of our poor choices, like it did for the prodigal son. If you blow your money on wild living, you'll suffer as a result. Or you may be humbled in some other way. You may be humbled by losses inflicted on, by others or by accident, or what seems to be just mere choi chance. Or you may actually find yourself coming to your senses. You may realize that you were once wrong. You might realize that you are in turn, at, turns better off under the hand of your father. Either way, however it is that we are humbled, it is the mighty hand of God that humbles us. If we ever do come to our senses about our sin, that is God's hand to lead us to repentance. It is the mighty hand of God that leads us to be able to say, Lord, to you I make confession. I have sinned and gone astray. I, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. But it is also the mighty hand of God that is able only able to lift us up, to forgive us. Though we do not deserve to be called your, ch your child, he treats us as his own dear child, as we are. Alternatively, if we will not be humbled, then we will be, be humbled on our own and come to our senses, come to repentance, then we will be humbled another way. Now, the second bit of advice is this. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. I suppose that when the prodigal left home, he left without a care in the world. He had money. What else did he need? 
What else did he have to concern himself with? But eventually that money ran out. And soon, soon when the money ran out, then he had plenty of worries, worries including what's going to be my next meal. And then when he comes to his senses, when he realizes that the pigs were eating better than he did, he was worrying about what would happen. So he plays through in his mind the conversation that he would have with his father when he would come home. But as it turns out, it's not just the destitute who have worries and cares. Anxieties. In fact, Jesus, when Jesus uses the word, he often uses it in connection with the gifts and pleasures of life. Like in the sower and the seed, the seed that is sown among the thorns, they get choked out by, it says, the worries and the cares and the pleasures of life. Not all the weeds are bad by themselves. Or, or in the story when Jesus is in the home of Mary and Martha, Jesus says to Martha, 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 you are concerned, worried, anxious about many things. Not bad things, but Mary has chosen what is better. Sure, you might worry, you might be anxious if you're about to lose something, or if what you have is getting low, The worries don't go away if you have more. As we've come to find out, the more we have, the more we're afraid to lose. And the more we have to take care of. And the more things that could go possibly wrong. The problem isn't the things that we are concerned about. The problem isn't even the concern itself. Jesus has cares. He cares for you. The problem goes back to our pride. And it has to do with trying to take all these cares upon ourselves alone. To do it ourselves. Just think about it. If the prodigal son was home, he wouldn't have to worry about where his next meal was going to come from. Even, he says, even his servants, my father's servants, don't worry about that. That concern could be shared by all among the household, especially his father and his brother. My dear friends, you have a father who cares for you. He has cares. You're it. The problem comes when we want to hoard all of our concerns and keep them to ourselves, and we insist that we must or no one else will. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So you could probably imagine some care or concern or anxiety that you have. You ask for this. Ask concerning this. You ask, is this something that is concern to my Father in heaven? Does he care about this? Does he care about it more than, than, or less than me? Is he not willing to bear it? And you will find that you indeed have a father at home in heaven for whom your cares are his and wishes to bear them. The third bit of advice, finally, Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. I don't know that the prodigal son left home intentionally, wishing intentionally to live in debauchery. Maybe he had good intentions. Maybe when his father said on the way out the door, son, be careful, he said, yeah, I will. But he wasn't. He didn't have a plan, perhaps. 
But someone did. The enemy did have a plan for him. He didn't come attacking him like a head-on, like a tank, but like a lion. Circling his prey, waiting for an opportunity. There are many, many ways for the enemy to devour us. He could, of course, attack us sort of head-on, I guess, to tempt us to, to sin. And eventually to become callous to that sin and eventually to to cold impenitence. But the devil is just as content, just as easily lead us, come around the backside and lead us to doubt or to despair of hope for us. The devil can easily come to lead us to constant, incessant worry. Or back to pride and envy of others. You notice how he caught the older son in the parable? Trapped him back in the same kind of pride that his younger brother had. By jealousy and envy of his brother. Never had to leave home to do it. But the enemy can be resisted. We can be self-controlled and alert. How? He says, resist him, firm in the faith. Our confidence in Christ, in his love and forgiveness for us, builds in us, puts in us a new heart that wishes to resist the adversary. A new heart which loves the Father who loves us, who trusts the Father who cares for us, who doesn't want to let him down and never wishes to leave him. And and we do not fight alone. You have brothers all across the world and, and even here. And it's encouraging to us to hear that we have brothers who are going through the same thing. You do not struggle alone. Our brothers also struggle right alongside us. But note that these brothers who struggle alongside us are not our enemy. They are not the competition. They are not to be the object of your envy or jealousy, whether they are the good ones who never left home and served faithfully, or they are the ones who have gone astray and wasted everything. The Father loves you both. We have all been young and stupid. Some of us still are. We've all been prodigal in one way or the other. And we all have a Father who loves us, who cares for us, more than willing to forgive us, and welcome us back into his home. A Father who does not retain his anger forever because he delights in steadfast love, who will again have compassion on us, who will tread our iniquities underfoot, who will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. My dear friends, listen to the voice of this Father. Until you receive his loving embrace and hear him say, welcome home. Amen. I sincerely pray that today's meditation on God's word has enriched you. Didn't get enough of God's word? Are you missing out on that in-person fellowship? We hold divine services right here in Bemidji, Minnesota, at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday school and adult Bible study is also offered between our Sunday services at 9.15 a.m. We also live stream our Sunday Divine Service at 8 a.m. You can ensure that you are notified when a stream is live or a new podcast is available by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's easy to find by typing in St. Mark Bemidji in the search bar and clicking on the subscribe button. Want to listen to meditations the way I do every day? Subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Go to podcastindex.org and search for St. Mark Bemidji to find us. 
This is our fifth year producing this podcast, and there is a large archive of devotional material online available if you want to learn more about God and His Word. Visit www.stmarksbemidji.org or look at the show notes in this podcast for a link to this and many other meditations on God. If you have any questions or you would like more information about our church and its ministry, please visit our website, which is once again, www.stmarksbemidji.org. May God bless the rest of your day.